Hey, what's going on guys? This is Arkadin of Level Up Together, and this is Abyss Floor 100 done easy. First try. Okay, first things first, let's talk team comp. So number one, you're gonna have Iseria, then you're gonna have Tamarin, Challenger Dominial, and uh, SSB. Let's talk Iseria first because Iseria is the one that I actually still don't have geared. I don't use her all that often. I actually transfer gear over when I want to use her from my Tywin, mostly because they share pretty similar stats the way I have Tywin built. One thing that's important to have on her though that did actually do a lot of work because you're already going to be doing the target debuff anyways with your SSB, I would definitely suggest, as you can see here, use Song of Stars. It's only going to give you more chances of getting that two turns of a... Uh, of a target on her 75% and that's only a plus 15 it can go higher obviously if you had that plus 30 so let's take a look at the gear so here's a pretty good version of what Iceria's gear should look like so as you can see I don't even have him super well geared I've got a 67 piece here a 45 piece here which I, I don't even know why I still have that in my inventory the big deal here is just making sure we had some decent effectiveness so we have 87% still not 100% so again there's still there's still some RNG in here but that was fine. That actually worked out really well for me. That was good. So the next character we're going to talk about is Challenger Dominial. So Challenger Dominial, I don't even... Okay, so I use her all the time in PvP, and I need to desperately switch her over to the 78 pieces as fast as I can actually deck them out. I just don't have the charms right now, so that's where we are. I do have her crit hit damage, however, at 301% which is pretty solid. So her crit her crit hit damage is gonna hit pretty well. Uh, you'll notice right now I have Tog's Book on. You don't want Tog's Book for this. Uh, for Challenger Dominial and any PvE content, I say any, there's probably exceptions, but in a lot of the cases, you're gonna for sure, in this case, use Daydream Joker. So make sure you toss a Daydream Joker on her, and that's gonna be your Challenger Dominial. Okay, so here's Tamarin. Tamarin is the next person on the list. And as you can see, she's, she's Decently geared. I've got her about 15k HP, 1200 defense. Uh, she's at 210 speed, which is pretty nice and fast. She works pretty well. Her effect resist is utter garbage. It's like 13%. It's nothing special. She's built like a healer. She, it, just build a healer like you build a healer. It's nothing crazy. Uh, honestly, the... The big thing for her that was very beneficial was not using Shimadra Staff, but actually changing out Shimadra Staff, and I ended up using uh, Wondrous Potion Vial. Potion Vial helped out a lot, especially in the final like phases, because there's a lot more random stuns, a lot more random debuffs that start showing up, um, that if your Tam doesn't happen to be using her S3 right at that moment, this actually saves you a lot of a lot of hassle. So Wondrous Potion Bio was good, and you really don't need to run anything else on her. And then last but not least, here's Seaside Bologna. So my Seaside Bologna is one of my more geared characters, um, just due to the fact that I use her in every piece of content. Her health is just under 10k, which I realize most of you would be like, uh, shouldn't that be a little higher? Yeah, probably should be, mine's not. The big thing for her that was really really helpful was between all of her retaliates on her s2 and then using s3s and s1s i didn't use drink for this we ended up using uh let me just show you real quick we ended up using bloodstone so we put bloodstone on which heals the ally with the lowest health by 19.5 percent of damage dealt that was huge being that it kind of supplemented any of the rest of the healing that we might need um just by doing general damage so that's our team before we get into the actual fight though, recognize that all of them had over 50% crit chance. The reason that you want them all over at least 50% crit chance is because you need to, you can use CDOM to boost your crit to make sure they all have 100% at the end of the day. All of them need to be critting the boss in the final phase. So make sure that you're at least over 50% crit hit chance on all of those characters. Now, Let's take a look at the actual footage. Okay, so what you're gonna notice in phase one is that it's just one of these Lich Lords that you end up taking and going for. You wanna make sure that your Isaria is always boosting Tamarin and always taking Tamarin um, to the, with her ability to be able to S3 constantly. We wanna be able to dispel, we wanna be able to add attack buff to our characters, and we wanna be able to use that attack buff on her S2 that S2 also CR boosts. So we want to be using CR boosts as much as we can to move our characters along. So in phase one, all you really have to focus on is just the Lich. Do not worry about anything else. Focus it all down and don't spend any souls. It's a great time to be able to start stacking up souls for phase two. 
which at first you see it's Apocalypse Robbie. And honestly, my first thought is this the time where I'm not supposed to, like where I have to get full crits off because I don't have crit hit buff on my CDOM and was a little bit scared. The reality is these first couple hits don't matter whatsoever. Just hit the boss a couple times, which will force a Robbie to do what looks like a special three animation, but she'll turn into what Twitch chat has at least deemed Wyvern 12. So in Wyvern 12, there's a couple things that you want to pay attention to. Number one, the boss will regularly shield. That shield, I believe, is undispellable based on the fact that it has that like darker color. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have any chance to actually dispel it. All I ended up doing was trying to break through it. You can debuff this boss. If you go over and put a third debuff on this boss, it will it will force a different phase. If you have two, you're good. So make sure that the only debuffs that you put up on this boss are defense break and target. Meaning, do not ever use SSB's S3. It's just not it's just not worth it. Also, don't use Iseria's S3. I do it one time and it was because I had no idea and I assumed that the boss could not get the unbuffable debuff. That is incorrect. It can be buff or unbuffed, so don't do that. Basically for each character, Iseria is going to be able to use her S1 and her S2. Just don't use S3. Uh, Tamarin's going to be able to still heal basically the whole time and, and continue to boost at CR on everybody and boost everybody's attack. You're going to use SSB, just her S1. And for CDOM, you're still also going to be using her S3 and S1 constantly, keeping up as much crit because you want to do as much damage as you can in this phase to try and force it before the boss actually hits his ultimate. If he gets to that phase and you do not have him finished by that point, make sure that you have at least two buffs on yourself. If you have two buffs on yourself, you don't take like any damage. If you don't, it'll probably wipe your, wipe your team out. Arky buff is also one of the buffs that you can use. So if you really do need to hit that final, that final spot where he's gonna hit you guys, um, with his ultimate, make sure if you if all else fails and you've only got one buff on everybody, save enough souls to Arky in that phase. This W12 phase is also the right time for you to be using all of your souls. If you can push the boss, use the souls. Otherwise, it's fine to save them, but use them. We've now made it back to Ravi again. So, when Ravi comes back, she's also going to bring two adds with her. One of which decreases your healing done, one of which decreases the amount that you can CR push. Those two are the yellow one, which is the healing, and the purple one, which is the CR. Everybody told me to kill purple first. I kind of agree. Considering you have so much CR push in your team, more than you do healing, it's faster for you to be able to kill these things very quickly anyways. Kill the, kill the purple one first. It just makes the most sense. You're going to be able to, and you're going to want to um, probably burn burn souls during this phase don't do it save those souls because after you kill these two ads robbie will respawn more ads and when she does you're going to want to be able to burn those ones down faster because you'll notice after the first two are done two more come out immediately after they die that are like basically souped up super saiyan versions of the first two when you get to those ones, those ones you want to be burning down a lot faster. You can kill them a lot quicker because they also add debuffs to your characters like Silence and Unbuffable um, that can kind of be a pain to deal with and they're, they're permanent debuffs until the, until the ad is dead. You'll also notice that in between phases, after you've killed all of those, that A. Ravi has a crit reduction buff, uh, like basically reduces your ability to crit her. This is the phase where critting her is super, super, super important. So you want to, as much as you can, use the S1 on your Tamarin to try and strip that off Apocalypse Ravi because you need to be critting. You need to be critting as much as you possibly can. Uh, the other options that you have are the S3 on Iseria, which can also remove that buff and put an unbuffable up. At this point in the, in the fight, it's actually okay for you to have as many debuffs as you want on Apocalypse Robbie when it's just her left. 
So don't worry, you're, you're really fine putting up all the extra stuff. So you can use your S3s intelligently on your SSB to be able to hit all the ads and Ravi, that's totally fine. And you just ultimately wanna make sure that CDOM's S3 is hitting all of your guys constantly to make sure that you're all critting all the time. So when Ravi does her ultimate, when she hits her ultimate, what she'll do is she'll jump into the air, do her S3 just like the normal animation, and that's when she's going to summon a new ad. That, that is the time where you're going to swap back and forth between Ravi and the ad, but, but killing the ad first. Like anytime there's an ad, kill it. It's the most important thing, bar none. Always kill the ad. After the ad is dead, switch back to Ravi, and ultimately, again, make sure you're critting, because those crits are gonna be huge. I don't even know what happens if you don't crit her because I had to. I, I ultimately was able to keep it up the whole time. I definitely would suggest though, uh, because I've heard that it's it'll it'll wipe your team. Making sure that that happens. So as you can see, we did pretty good. That actually ended up working out super solid. And honestly, I made several mistakes between using Arky way too early, not understanding that I needed to wait to the ultimate phase on W12. That could have really screwed us over, as well as uh, getting to the point where I killed all the ads and had no ability to strip off the crit reduction buff on a Ravi. And the fact that we crit through it anyways, literally nuts and had i known the fight a little better i think we could have done that significantly better all that said it's amazing how fast and how efficient this particular comp works so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys try it out yourself and if, if you haven't beat 100 yet if you have these characters do this man this this was really fun not very long and gave us a lot of uh i mean just a lot of cool options really it was just really neat i loved it Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you think of this, guys. Love you. Can't wait to see you next time. Peace out, boys. It's like Christmas in here. It is, but like it's not Christmas yet. Come on, baby. Let's get some. Let's get some sparkles. Oh, Emo Ken, come on. Yes, yes, Emo Ken. Woo! There it is. Mm, get out of here. I guess we're going back to saving mystics, boys. Oh my gosh.